All right, Congressman, let's move on to the topic at hand. I'd like you to hear something. Uh, This is uh, from Howard Kurtz on CNN's uh, Reliable Sources. Uh, He he did a whole segment on the media coverage of the Gosnell trial. Of course, the abortion doctor charged with seven deaths, uh, killing little babies by snipping uh, their their spines after they were born alive with scissors, saving body parts in the refrigerator, killing a woman for uh, lack of uh, proper treatment. And they say that there may be as many as 100 or more such deaths uh, by this doctor um, and this trial uh, it, it still uh, NBC and CBS nothing on their morning or evening news shows to this day New York Times basically nothing the mainstream media basically nothing only last week late did CNN and some others get on board a little bit but I want you to hear uh, uh, um, as I said Howard Kurtz with something he said Sunday this is cut 45 business okay well the critics are right. The horrifying crimes that a Pennsylvania abortion doctor is accused of committing haven't gotten enough national media coverage. Kermit Gosnell is on trial for allegedly running a house of horrors, storing all kinds of mutilated fetuses, some of which were brutally killed. All right, see, here's the problem. Uh, he called them mutilated fetuses. And if you read the grand jury report as, as uh, newsbusters.org and my friend Noel Shepard uh, uh, printed in an article just uh, about this piece that you just heard, uh, it said babies. It didn't say fetuses. So, I mean, uh, uh, his right. unwillingness to even recognize what's going on here is a huge part of the problem. Well, it is, uh, that is uh, indeed uh, a huge part of the problem. They, they refuse to recognize any of it, and when they do, they can barely come to terms with reporting it accurately. These are, are live babies, and these are live full-grown women that have lost their lives, and they refuse to discuss it. Uh, I brought it to the House floor uh, on Friday morning, and at that point I named all the major news outlets, and they refused to cover it. This is huge news. I can tell you that I think if there was an eye doctor in some town that refused or not refused, but that saw uh, certain patients of one color or one race in one room and then of another race in a different room with a different standard, that would be front-page news. But in this case, because it's live babies being killed and the abortion argument and political correctness uh, disallows us in this country to have an honest discussion about the things that are actually happening, this is what we've come to. We can't discuss the murder of, of, of grown women and babies in our country at, the score, at this point at scores of them. I mean, the guy got rid of all the records. We don't know if it's a hundred or a thousand or what it is. He may be one of the, if he's guilty, he may be one of the the, the biggest serial killers of all time. And we should point out uh, that Congressman Scott, Scott Perry's district uh, housed, if you will, this uh, this uh, House of Horrors, this abortion clinic, and uh, that's, uh, I guess, one of the reasons why you're so uh, angry about it all. Well, hold on. Let me let me just state for the record that my district is South Central Pennsylvania. This is in Southeast. Oh, okay, South okay. I was. But it's but it's in my state. Yeah, sure, no sure. No one will say anything about it. Not the president. Not the not the press. Not the media. Not other members. In many cases, I mean, what does it take? The president has shown his ability to move mountains on public policy and change public opinion. He's got two daughters. How would he feel if any of his daughters were in their darkest hours trying to make this decision and go to a person like this in their eighth month of pregnancy or something like it? Many of these women have been abused or in horrific situations that are driven them to this in the first place, and then they go there and they take away a life of, of a child that's viable, of a child that could live on its own. And no one's saying a word. Well, about what what it. do you think, th- be in America. Congressman? What do you think? Th- I'll g- I'm going to play a soundbite from Obama, which will explain, I think, quite quite plainly why he's not saying anything. But why do you think the media will not report this? Well, I, I think that the media doesn't want to because it's a. It, it, first of all, it's very unpleasant. It's uncomfortable. The subject is, uh, uh, like I said, it's uncomfortable. And I also think that, generally speaking, there's somewhat of an overall agenda here that. Uh, that uh, nobody wants to talk about abortion and nobody wants to stand up for the right of the living or the would-be living in this country. And this is just what we've come to now that we can't even and won't even discuss it. All right, let's 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 just play quickly for you, Congressman. Cut 37. This uh, is President uh, Obama, and uh, this goes back to 2008 at uh, the Saddlebrook uh, conference that he sat down with and uh, Pastor Warren, and here's what he had to say. At what point does a baby get human rights, in your view? Well, you know, I, I think that whether you're looking at it from a theological perspective or uh, a scientific perspective, uh, answering that question with specificity, uh, you know, is is uh, above my pay grade. 
So I think that answers your question as to why the president won't speak out. He pro I mean, in his heart of hearts, he probably, the way he voted in the Illinois state legislature about the very same issue and this statement here and repeated statements since, um, you know, maybe it doesn't bother him too much. It is breathtakingly disappointing to hear the leader of our country come up with an answer like that. And I just wonder if, if the media, you know, that because many of the folks in the media, you know, I, I, I hate to be stereotypical here, but many individuals within the media support the president and they just uh, don't want to put him on the spot. But I wonder if someone would ask him the question, it, sir, Mr. President, if it were your daughter, how would you feel if it was your child that was either uh, undergoing treatment by Dr. Gosnell or was in that circumstance or, or was, you know, was going to be the, uh, the unborn baby uh, in that circumstance? What is your answer then? I have two little girls, and, and this, we can't imagine that this happens in America in the 21st century, yet it happens, and what's even more unimaginable is no one will say anything about it. Yeah. What, 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 what's the next move? What, what more can you do, sir, or could we do uh, other than talk about it as we're doing? Well, I think that's what we do. We try and increase the pressure and, uh, and keep on saying, Mr. President, where are you? Mr. President, where are you? Like I said, he can move mountains on public policy and public opinion here. And, uh, you know, we think that there is a nexus here for the federal government to be involved. We think that, uh, you know, women were crossing state lines in this regard, and it, it's a certainly where the attorney general can be involved. And we can do something about this. Look, this is not typical, I hope, and I, and I believe, of most care facilities. But if there is one, there is bound to be another. And we just can't rest until we know that this isn't happening in America. All right. Listen, uh, Congressman uh, Scott Perry, thank you so much. Great talking to you. Keep up the fight. I hope you'll come back, sir. Thank you very much. I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. That's uh, Congressman Perry, Steve, uh, Scott Perry from uh, the 4th Congressional District of the great state of Pennsylvania. And um, uh, uh, obviously the wrong district uh, wasn't in his district, but it was in his state, which is basically what I meant to say. And um, we will uh, continue to cover this story.